Welcome to Playfully Orange, our conversations on Thursdays about arts and culture here in Central Florida. My guest today is Pam Bussey. Welcome, Pam. Thank you, Terry. So, Pam, I see you at arts things all over the place. So I thought, let's talk to Pam about her perspectives. And I know you've traveled Tell us a little bit about your background. Where did you come from? How did you get interested in the arts? Okay, I will try and keep it short because I have a tendency to, to be very verbose. Okay, so the short version is that my father was in the military, so I'm an army brat. Um, my younger years I spent in different states in the United States. My brothers, we were all born in different states. I've lived in Germany. However, my formative years, junior high school, high school, were spent in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection. Um, I was fortunate to receive a full tuition scholarship to attend my junior and senior year, an all-female school called Springside School. And it was there that um, I really got exposed to, I would say, arts, although I'm of the generation where growing up in Philadelphia and other places, we had art and music in public schools, and I don't think so much you see that. But it is very important at a young age that you expose young people to art, to music. And so um, I graduated from Springside. And it is now joined with the brother school down the street, so a Springside Chestnut Hill Academy. I went to Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut. Um, while there, I became more involved, if you will, because uh, Trinity had a radio station. I was not involved with that, but I had friends who were. And I grew up during a time when vinyl, when records were very much in vogue. And for those of us who are of a certain generation. We remember that it was a time of um, black art posters and album covers were truly works of art. And that's how we decorated our door rooms with album covers and, and black art posters. And so after graduating from Trinity, I had the, um, the good fortune to go to Temple Law School, which is now Temple is called Beasley School of Law, but while there, I got to attend a summer session at the University of Ghana Law School, and it was really there that I started, I guess, collecting. Did you <laughs> because say I bought back a yes, like like the African country. Yes, like Ghana, the first African country to gain its independence in 1957. Ghana. All right. <laughs> So I bought back a lot of African um, carvings, um, paintings, fabric. Fortunately for me, I had gone to college with um, individuals who were from Ghana, and they were there the summer that I was there. And so my first trip to an African country, I have no words to describe how fabulous it was. Um, I got to go to Togo, and that sort of set the stage for a lifelong love of travel and having different experiences. And whenever I travel, I bring back music, I bring back art, I bring back fabric because as you know, I do art quilts and we're gonna talk about that. I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm saying a lot, but we can break it down into smaller chunks. So in terms of um, art, I've been exposed to art all my life, um, I sew. My mother taught me how to sew when I was very young. And um, so all of that kind of has come together. And when I moved 
that's just my neighbor and my neighbor's from Bangladesh. So I'm surrounded because my front door is open. No. What? Uh, okay. You've lived in our, in Central Florida for quite a while now, though, right? Thirty years, yes. Okay. So, what have been one or two of your favorite arts experiences in Central Florida? Okay, I have to be frank. When I first moved here, I said to myself, "What have I done?" Because when I first moved here, um, Growing up in Philadelphia, I was surrounded by, you know, the art museum. There's an African American museum of art. We have a, a festival which is called Odunde Festival, which emphasizes African culture. There are more colleges, universities, and I can count on hands, fingers, and toes, and then still would need more hands, fingers, and toes. When I first moved here, there was no law school in the central florida area there was no medical school ucf was kind of sort of in the infancy stages but what sticks out in my mind is because of the weather here there would always be festivals at lake eola and these festivals would highlight different cultures and that spoke to me because i grew up in philadelphia where indeed Although like most northern cities, you know, you have pockets or neighborhoods where where, you know, groups choose to live together. But generally, it's a huge melting pot. So I appreciated that. So I would always go to festivals. And that's probably where I first started meeting people, the vendors. And also in Edenville, if, if people are not aware, um, you know, for years and years, there was the Zora Neale Hurston Festival. Um, and that spoke to me because in college. I was a double major, political science and intercultural studies, which is like a hodgepodge of African studies, African-American studies, Latin American studies, Asian studies, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So that truly fit into to who I am and who I see myself. I call myself a citizen of the world. And there's a reason I call myself a citizen of the world. Yes, I see a little Asian behind you, some African. Uh, a melting pot. <laughs> We've got a collection. Yes. Yes. Well, um, outside of Central Florida, tell us about a uh, most impressive artistic experience that you have encountered. Where have you been really awed at something? Okay, so I do travel for art, just so you know. <laughs> and we're fortunate because here in um, Central Florida, you know, you're a hop, skip, and jump away from. Fort Lauderdale, from Miami, but also Savannah. I love SCAD. Um, you know, I don't know if people are aware of SCAD, but it's in um, Savannah, Georgia. And uh, every Memorial Day weekend in Beaufort, South Carolina, they have um, the Gullah Festival. And so one year I said, you know, I think that's something I want to check out. And and I have um, a very dear friend that I went to college with her. She lives in Columbia, South Carolina. And then a very another friend that went to college with me, she lives in Raleigh. We all decided we were going to get together and rendezvous at the Gullah Festival. And so we did. Um, and so that was an interesting experience. It wasn't quite what I thought it would be. But then somewhere in our travels, and I forget the name of the city, uh, but there's also a Nigerian village and I forget the name of it. So I did that as well. So, you know, art is everywhere. I mean, at least it is for me. Um, I, I've been to India with my good friend, uh, Shalini Tandon, who also is an artist. She teaches batik at the Beardall Community Center. And I, I took batik there. And when we first got there, I noticed that a lot of the properties, they had gates private gates and on each gate there was a different design and I was like I started taking pictures and they thought I was crazy and I was like that's art don't you see that all the designs are different so I think depending on on how you view the world then there's beauty in almost everything and you can see art or design in almost anything and, and that's how I view the world. Well I think that's a great viewpoint of the world and thank you for sharing 
that with us. Our 10 minute conversation has gone by very quickly, but it's been great to get to know a little bit more about you. And I hope that that viewpoint of taking the world as a piece of art can be shared by all of our viewers. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. And if I could just add very quickly, I further that viewpoint because I do a podcast myself. It's called Ancestral Muses, where I talk to people that I know and that I meet and they get to share their perspective about art in the world as well. And thank you, Terry, for having this conversation with me. Super. And thank you all for joining us for this conversation every Thursday afternoon, Playfully Orange. Uh, on Tuesdays, I also do a conversation called Diverse Orange, talking about diversity in our area. Anyway, thank you. Adios. Thank you.